Degrassi. Mm. I grew up on this show, man. Like, oh, God. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're actually going to lean into. You kind of started on the show around 15 years old, would you say? Uh, 15, yeah, 14 and 15, yes. So that's kind of like high school age, right? Oh, so, yes. So, like, did it feel like an actual high school experience for you to be on Degrassi? Uh, no, aside from the learning experience aspect of it, but uh, looking back, um, when I was in the heat of it, it was they were two very different things. Like I had this uh, amazing job that I just kind of fell into, and I had no idea what to expect. And then I had my my school life and all all my friends that um, I didn't go to um, to an art school or um, a school that was really. Um, sort of geared towards children who were in, uh, who were athletes or in the entertainment business from a young age. I, it was just normal high school, so there were two very separate things. Like I, I would go back and uh, j just be with my crew that loved it but didn't understand it at all, and then I would uh, go into the Degrassi world and put me pictures and have just that different monster to tell. Uh, not not monster. It was great, but like they were, they were. It, in no way did it feel like school. It felt like. Um, like a holiday. It was great. So, so you were able to go to like an actual high school during your time at Degrassi. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. we were kind of wondering about that yesterday, weren't we? Hillary? Yeah, absolutely. And like, what would that be like? Like you're going into math class for, in the real world and then you're going into math class for like Degrassi High? Like, I don't know. <laughs> it was, uh, it was interesting. Like for, for each cast member, it was a little bit different, but uh, what they wanted us to do was be at school as much as possible. And uh, for the times that you knew you wouldn't be at school, uh, you would either have to have like a buddy system in place with one of your good friends in each class and talk to your guidance counselor and talk to your teacher, let them know about the situation, how unique it was, but that you really wanted to stay on top of everything. So you actually got your schoolwork ahead of time. And then it, would, it was almost like a correspondence um, in, you know, in You're right basically kind of living two lives there, you know? A little That's, bit. Yeah. Also, so... You, like one of your buddies, I guess, on Degrassi was uh, Aubrey, who's better known as Drake to most of Toronto and the rest of the world now. Yeah. And uh, throughout all the seasons he was on Degrassi, you were also there. And we thought it'd be kind of fun to bring up a little Throwback Thursday. Throwback Thursday. I mean, I it's Thursday. Here's, here's the opportunity. <laughs> so here's a little blast from the past. A homie is a player, and that is all. So why'd you have to go and kick? His ball and chain ain't that your name? Cause you a play a hater, and that's a shame. And chicks like you ain't worth too much. So shut up, girl, and make my lunch. Yeah. Shane, do you remember oh, 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 Do you remember no. preparing for that scene at all? Lightly. Um <laughs> I I it was my first uh, experience rapping um, on or off TV. Uh, it, it just wasn't, you know, uh, with my skin color. Not saying that uh, <laughs> that lots of uh, white people don't gravitate towards rap, uh, like Eminem or okay. or, or uh, Easy E or anyone else. But um, no, it was. I took a lot of my cues from Aubrey actually that day. Except I remember uh, just with the flow of the words. Um, we just, we couldn't come up with a good idea of how to kind of bridge the gap between his, his lyrics and mine, but there was this, just this one bridging word where ball and chain, um, or however it went, <laughs> is that your name? Cause you a player hater and that's a shame. But I remember I was the one that picked that flow to space it out. And that was, that was uh, the first time that I realized like, Hey. Maybe I have a career in uh, in writing. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I really. And the most crucial part of it all <laughs> was to end it by crossing your arms and, right? and leaning against yeah. each other. Right? Whose decision was that? I think that we were just like we were it feeling was like in it. That high yeah, high. exactly. Like, yeah. Right. Sometimes that was lightning in a bottle. You you can't explain all those things. Totally. <laughs> so you were on the show for about nine seasons, yeah. right? Yeah. How was it like leaving it? Um, it, it was sad. I, I mean, it, it was the right time. Um, well, I just, I had a talk with my exec producers, um, I, I think midway through season nine. And uh, it, it was just like, you know, a really informal uh, discussion where we were just, I mean, like after working together for that long and experiencing so much together, you, you can just be really candid. And they, they said like, um, Shane, you've been with us for a really long time now. Uh, we love you. You love us. 
uh, your character has been through everything that a human could ever like hope to. Like really. everything, everything that happens, like happens on the grassy. It, like it's crazy. Exactly, exactly. So yeah. jam packed into like a, a short four or five year high school career, but I lived a lifetime for that character. <laughs> They're just like we could keep writing for you, but it wouldn't really serve the character any better. People would stop to, uh, stop believing that this could still be happening to the same person, and it, it would just be wise if we we got you to star in the movie uh to finish up the season and that would kind of be your your swan song and you could ride off into the sunset and i said yeah let's let's do it that way let's cruise on in go out on top <laughs> exactly <laughs> on horseback <laughs> slow mo music in the background exactly. yeah. this sounds like down too no. <laughs> oh my god yeah. So around the last season of Degrassi, we see our character kind of getting involved in music. He's a drummer in a band. And then so now we find you, a drummer, in a band for Dear Love. Yeah. What are the odds of that happening? Was that like some kind of foreshadowing in there? You know, it's really weird. Uh, the first serious band after Degrassi actually was compiled of all the characters that I was in Studs with, or downtown, no, no, Studs, on Degrassi. So I we had... Delmar, Jamie, Ray, uh, you would know them better as Danny, um, <laughs> character names, wow, uh, Danny, Peter, and, and, oh no, Scott Patterson, I can't remember his character name right now, but I, either way, so we, we had, five of six of us were all on the show together, so it, it was kind of hard to be taken seriously at that point because we were seen as more of a Degrassi gimmick instead of a serious band, even though we, we want to be taken uh, that way. But, uh, yeah, I, I've just been interested in music and playing music for longer than I've been acting, so it just seemed um, when I was finished with the show and I had a lot more time on my hands, it was just the natural course of things to come. I just gravitated more to it and started dedicating more time towards the music. And then, uh, you know, five years later, I've been in a series of bands, and now Dear Love, uh, being by far the best of uh, everything I've experienced to this point with music is just, I mean, this is really all I want to pursue at this point. So I've actually stepped away from acting so I could completely focus on this. So you don't see no more acting in the future? I didn't say that, but at this <laughs> point right now, it's it's kind of, they both require your full attention. Mm -hmm. And the acting, the great thing about acting is you can kind of start building a career at any age. It's actually, when you think about it, uh, lots of actors don't get their big breaks until they're in their mid-30s, early 40s, because that's when the really meaty roles with a lot of like deep emotions and, and issues start to come out. It's not so much with people in their mid-20s, late-20s comes after that so this is actually the perfect time to step away for a little bit recalibrate um really pursue my other passion which is music and um hopefully get to a point where i'm i have a strong foothold in the music industry and then i can start you know taking the acting back on lightly and maybe you know, do them both like a jared leto or like not so much. He's doing some great Leto. things right now. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? You yeah, we have also Christina, uh, one of our other Ryersonian uh, colleagues, I'll call her, in the studio as well. And she, when she, we mentioned Jared Little right now, she just went like this, waving her I hand. I can't she's take it. Shame, she's fanning it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's 42 and looks amazing. So. He's 42? He's 42. Can talk about his hair? Really? Because I, I just saw a picture of him recently. I, I'm thinking his hair is getting a little too long. When it was like Brad Pitt length, which he has a new haircut too now. He has like yeah, uh, yeah, that no, that is he claims it's for a roll, but I uh, mean, mm -hmm, okay, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Christina's not having that one. No, 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 no. that's done. Okay, <laughs> all right. Wow, Brad Pitt losing votes. What, what's the world come to? Though? Changing things up around here. Yep. <laughs> Ladies like the locks. That's true. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, we also have Angela in the studio, and she just goes, that's why we have Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> Come on, I'm girls, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right here. Can't wait. No, no, no. You used to have locks, too. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. <laughs> Hey. The, the thing is, I would <laughs> gladly, I would gladly grow my hair out again. Um, the only problem is, 
I have like 14 awkward phases between it gets to that, uh, between like now and when it gets to that length. So until I actually don't have to show my face for uh, like a good 12 months in between those phases, I, I got to keep it short. But that's why they created the beanie. Yeah, but I just, I can't pull, I'm hot enough in the summertime. I just, I can't do that. Can't. Okay, next winter. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see. So we were checking out the bio of the band and I noticed that Okay, every member is from the East Coast, which I totally dig, coming yep. from PEI. I'm a huge fan, a few, huge supporter of anyone from the EC. <laughs> and yeah, so they're from Halifax. Yeah. Except you. Except me. So how the heck did you guys meet? Uh, well, up until uh, very recently, there were two members from uh, the city here, and then the others were from East. But, okay, let's start like this. I was in a band beforehand um, uh, with also Jamie Johnson from uh, Degrassi and uh, my my best friend, and so but it was an instrumental band, and for a long time we were auditioning singers, and we finally came across our lead singer right now, Dave, who is amazing, like a great songwriter, lyricist, multi instrumentalist, brilliant guy. He's kind of cool too. And um, so he was uh, the first person to audition for that band that everyone was like, yes, this is the guy. Um, but very soon after starting to work with him, we realized we didn't really want to work with that guitarist anymore. So we parted ways with him, and then we had a singer and a bassist and a drummer and no guitarist, and we were trying to figure out what to do with that. Um, Dave is uh, from back east in Halifax, and he uh, moved here with his girlfriend uh, for work. And um, so he had this idea a couple of months into the project after auditioning guitarists and not finding the right fit that he would call home to his old guitarist uh, in a band called Trial by Wire that they, they worked together for years and years and years. And I uh, said, um, my friend Marty, who kind of called it quits with music after Dave left and came to Toronto, maybe we take a big chance and I tell him that man, I found the right core group of people. If you really want to give music one last like big, big shot, so you never have to question when you're older if it could have worked out, put your life on hold in Halifax, move into Toronto, give it a solid year to see if there's any momentum, chemistry, and how the songwriting goes and everything, and if, if you like it, then we'll continue on. So we found a way to get it, except for Dave, who doesn't live in the house, we found a way to have everyone move in under the uh, same roof. So we have our studio in the basement, everyone else lives upstairs. And yeah, so then we had um, my friend Arash and Marty from Halifax, Dave from Halifax. Recently we parted ways with Arash, but we brought in another uh, then guitarist, now our, our bassist from the East Coast, like in the same sort of fashion, like we know that you love playing music, we have we have a great opportunity for you here. Come into the house. So yeah, you know, I live with a whole bunch of East Coasters and Okay Shane. Them. So you're saying you're <laughs> living with a whole bunch of East Coasters. Yeah. So I'm gonna put you on the test. Uh oh. Do you know what a donair is? A donair? Isn't it is a type of sauce? <laughs> Closer is a donair sauce. Okay, you go back home and be like, dude, we gotta have donairs tonight. They will be like, yeah! And they'll be so impressed with you. What is that? I have, no idea, is that? I'm, I'm, I have no idea what you're talking about. It is, it's kind of like a shawarma to Toronto, but like okay. donair is to Halifax, okay? Okay. And that's where it was born, apparently, is the donair was born in Halifax, nice. and it comes with a delicious white sauce. Um, there's a place in the Danforth that serves just donairs. Check it out. Bring, bring your roommates. They'll love you forever. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> but back to the music. <laughs> um, so, as far as like distribution, um, our EP is ready to be released literally any day. It could have actually happened in the time that we started this interview. Oh, uh, look at <laughs> every breaking news! Like I know, right? 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 Stop the presses if we even have presses anymore. But no, no, it's uh, it literally will be uh, available on iTunes. Um, Possibly even today, like we just got yeah. the final matches in. It. I know, I know, I know. So, uh, like, if you keep checking uh, the Dear Love Facebook, so facebook.com slash Dear Love Music, or um, um, at Dear Love Music on Twitter, my personal Twitter at Shaney Kips, S H A N E Y K I P P S, uh, you'll get all those updates. But yeah, no, really, really exciting. It's my first actual, like, very well produced 
um, full length EP and the song powers through the roof and we're really really excited about it. Nice, so, that's yeah. so probably awesome. happening as we speak right oh, now. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that once I'm out of this booth, I'll I'll get an update and then, like the quickest selling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and how about the overall? EP, yeah. How about the overall goal of the band? Are you going to participate in Canadian Music Week, or is like a Juno nomination something? I mean, in the future, is that what we're working towards? I'm uh, the sky's the limit. I'm I'm hope the bigger the better. Obviously, um, we missed. Oh no no no! Canadian Music Week. When does that come up? That again? is happening in May this year. It usually happens around the end, or sorry, the middle of March. But they moved it a little further. That's right. That's right. So we uh, we've submitted. Um, our electronic press kit to as many different um, sort of festivals coming up, and uh, like we we submitted for North by Northeast. Um, I'm pretty sure we did Music Week as well. We missed Indie Week because that that was in October. Mm -hmm. But next time around, uh, we will end then festival festivals all over the place. So hopefully, uh, this is a big year for exposure for us, and the EP gets some traction and. Then uh, we'll be playing uh, opening for Drake in no time. <coughs> <laughs> Heck yeah! And Christina <laughs> raises the room. <laughs> It'll be a Don't variety miss. week. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another rap in there or something. You know, kind of. I'll see. If, I'll see if he uh, if he's down to uh, if kind that of. Moves back. You exactly, have to make sure exactly. the arms are crossed. It's not right. happening. Or else, yeah. But he's he's a a lot more uh, muscular than I remember him. So I'm not if he does that and leans on me in the same way, it might send me like <laughs> flying follow. across the stage. No, because he, he was tall and lanky, and now he's just tall and jacked. So it's it's you know it's got to change something in the center of gravity. You know what? I don't get it. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to check out Shane and his band. Year love. You can see him in February 25th at the Horseshoe Tavern. Yes. Which I love that place, so I I might see you there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I might just pop in. Just Please come, please bring whoever you'd like. It is a free show. Uh, it's new music free? nights. Free? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, oh, I said the magic free? word. Right? Of course, we're all <laughs> students here, right? I mean, Why free? Because music isn't a, uh, about... Music's for everyone. It's like, not, okay. It doesn't okay. have to be about yeah. commercialism. No, no, no. It's, uh, <laughs> it's New Music Night at the Horseshoe, so every Tuesday there are always free shows. It's just for people to come in and experience um, hopefully what's going to be big in the Toronto scene. I'm hoping, praying. So, yeah, <laughs> just come on in. Uh, we will be on uh, late, so expect to, you know, be there around 11 o'clock. And I know it's a school night, but oh my gosh, how badly do you really want to see us? So much. Pushing like, it, exactly, but you know what? exactly. <laughs> it's not, no problem. <laughs> All right, so Horseshoe Tavern on February 25th. Check it out. Yes.